Session 30, February 24, 1981. I am Ra. I greet you in the love and light of the one infinite creator we communicate now. Question. I'm going to make a statement and then let you correct it if I made any errors. This is the statement. Creation is a single entity or unity. If only a single entity exists, then the only concept of service is the concept of service to self. If this single entity subdivides, then the concept of service of one of its parts to one of its other parts is born. From this springs the equality of service to self or to others. It would seem that as the logos subdivided, parts would select each orientation. As individual entities emerge in space-time, then I would assume that they have polarity. Is this statement correct? Ra, this statement is quite perceptive and correct until the final phrase in which we note that the polarities begin to be explored only at the point when a third density entity becomes aware of the possibility of choice between the concept of distortion of service to self or service to others. This marks the end of what you may call the unself conscious or innocent phase of conscious awareness. Question. Thank you. Would you define mind, body, and spirit separately? Ra. These terms are all simplistic, descriptive terms, which equal a complex of energy focuses. The body, as you call it, being the material of the density which you experience at a given space-time or time-space, this complex of material being available for distortions of what you would call physical manifestation. The mind is a complex which reflects the in-pouring of the spirit and the up-pouring of the body complex. It contains what you know as feelings, emotions, and intellectual thoughts in its more conscious complexities. Moving further down the tree of mind, we see the intuition, which is of the nature of the mind, more in contact or in tune with the total beingness complex. Moving down to the roots of mind, we find the progression of consciousness, which gradually turns from the personal to the racial memory, to the cosmic influxes, and thus becomes a direct contactor of that shuttle which we call the spirit complex. This spirit complex is the channel whereby the inpouring from all the various universal, planetary, and personal inpourings may be funneled into the roots of consciousness, and whereby consciousness may be funneled to the gateway of intelligent infinity through the balanced intelligent energy of body and mind. You will see by this series of definitive statements that mind, body, and spirit are inextricably intertwined and cannot continue one without the other. Thus we refer to the mind-body-spirit complex rather than attempting to deal with them separately. For the work, shall we say, that you do during your experiences is done through the interaction of these three components, not through any one. Question. Upon our physical death, as we call it, from this particular density and this particular incarnative experience, we lose this chemical body. Immediately after the loss of this chemical body, do we maintain a different type of body? Is, a still, is it still a mind-body-spirit complex at that point? Ra, this is correct. The mind-body-spirit complex is quite intact. The physical body complex you now associate with the term body being but manifestation of a more dense and intelligently informed and powerful body complex. Question. Is there any loss to the mind or spirit after this transition which we call death, or any impairment of either because of the loss of this chemical body which we now have? Ra, in your terms there is a great loss of mind complex due to the fact that much of the activity of the mental nature of which you are aware during the experience of the space-time continuum is as much of a surface illusion as is the chemical body complex. In other terms, nothing whatever of importance is lost. The character, or shall we say, pure distillation of emotions and biases or distortions in wisdom, if you will, becoming obvious for the first time, shall we say, these pure emotions and wisdoms and biased distortions being, for the most part, either ignored or underestimated during physical life experience. In terms of the spiritual, this channel is then much opened due to the lack of necessity for the forgetting characteristic of third density. Question. 
I would like to know how the mind-body-spirit complex originate, going as far back as necessary. How does the origination occur? Do they originate by spirit-forming mind and mind-forming body? Can you tell me this? Ra, we ask you to consider that you are attempting to trace evolution. This evolution is as we have previously described, the consciousness being first, in first density, without movement, a random thing. Whether you may call this mind or body complex is a semantic problem. We call it mind, body complex, recognizing always that in the simplest iota of this complex exists in its entirety the one infinite creator. This mind-body complex, then in second density, discovering the growing and turning towards the light, thus awakening what you may call the spirit complex, that which intensifies the upward spiraling toward the love and light of the infinite creator. The addition of the spirit complex, though apparent rather than real, it having existed potentially from the beginning of space-time, perfects itself by graduation into third density. When the mind-body-spirit complex becomes aware of the possibility of service to self or other self, then the mind-body-spirit complex is activated. Question. Thank you. I don't wish to cover ground that we have covered before but it is sometimes helpful to restate these concepts for complete clarity since words are a poor tool for what we do. Just as a passing point, I was wondering, on this planet during the second density, I believe there was habitation during the same space-time of bipedal entities of what we call the dinosaurs. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct. Question. These two types of entities seem to be very incompatible, you might say, with each other. I don't know, but can you tell me the reason for both types of entities inhabiting the same space-time? Ra, consider the working of free will as applied to evolution. There are paths that the mind-body complex follows in an attempt to survive, to reproduce, and to seek in its fashion to which is unconsciously felt as the potential for growth, these two arenas or paths of development being two among many. Question. In second density, the concept of bisexual reproduction first originates. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct. Question. Can you tell me the philosophy behind this method of propagation of the bodily complex? Ra, the second density in, is one in which the groundwork is being laid for third density work. In this way, it may seem that the basic mechanism of reproduction capitulates into a vast potential in third density for service to other self and to self, this being not only by the function of energy transfer, but also by the various service performed due to the close contact of those who are, shall we say, magnetically attracted one to the other, these entities having the opportunity for many types of service which would be unavailable to the independent entity. Question. Was the basic reason for this to increase the opportunity of the experience of the one creator? Ra, this is not merely correct, but is the key to that which occurs in all densities. Question, does the process of bisexual reproduction or the philosophy of it play a part in the spiritual growth of second density entities? Ra, in isolated instances, this is so due to efficient perceptions upon the part of entities or species, for the greater part, by far, this is not the case in second density, the spiritual potentials being those of third density. Question. Thank you. Can you give me a brief history of the metaphysical principles of the development of each of our planets that surround our sun, their function with respect to the evolution of beings? Ra. We shall give you a metaphysical description only of those planets upon which individual mind-body-spirit complexes have been are or shall be experienced. You may understand the other spheres to be a part of the Logos. We take the one known as Venus. This planetary sphere was one of rapid evolution. It is our native Earth and the rapidity of the progress of the mind-body-spirit complexes upon its surface was due to harmonious interaction. Upon the entity known to you as Mars, as you have already discussed, this entity was stopped in mid-third density thus being unable to continue in progression due to the lack of hospitable conditions upon the surface. This planet shall be undergoing healing for some of your space-time millennia. 
The planet which you dwell upon has a metaphysical history well known to you, and you may ask about it if you wish. However, we have spoken to a great degree upon this subject. The planet known as Saturn has a great affinity for the infinite intelligence, and thus has been dwelled upon in its magnetic fields of time-space by those who wish to protect your system. The planetary entity known to you as Uranus is slowly moving through the first density and has the potential of moving through all densities. Question. Thank you. You stated yesterday that much of this major galactic system dwells spiritually as a part of the Logos. Do you mean that near the center of this major galactic system that the stars do not have planetary systems? Is this correct? Ra, this is incorrect. The Logos has distributed itself throughout your galactic system. However, the time-space continua of some of your more central sun systems are much further advanced. Question. Well then, could you generally say that as you get closer to the center of this major system, that there is a greater spiritual density or spiritual quality in that area? Ra, this will be the last question of this session as this instrument is somewhat uncomfortable. We do not wish to deplete the instrument. The spiritual density or mass of those more towards to the center of your galaxy is known. However, this is due simply to the varying timelessness states during which the planetary spheres may coalesce. This process of space-time beginning occurring earlier, shall we say, as you approach the center of the galactic spiral. Question. Is there anything we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or improve the contact? Ra, this instrument is well balanced and the contact is as it should be. The instrument has certain difficulties of a distortion you would call muscular spasm, thus making the motionless position uncomfortable. Thus we leave the instrument. I am Ra. You are doing well, my friend. I leave you in the love and light of the one infinite creator. Go forth then, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one creator, Adonai. Session 31, February 25, 1981 I am Ra. I greet you in the love and light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Question. I have a question that the instrument has asked me to ask. It reads, you speak of various types of energy blockages and transfers, positive or negative, that may take place due to participation in our sexual reproductive complex of actions. Could you please explain these blockages and energy transfer with emphasis upon what an individual who is speaking to be in accordance with the law of one may positively do in this area? Is it possible for you to answer this question? Ra, it is partially possible, given the background we have laid, this is properly a more advanced question. Due to the specificity of the question, we may give a general answer. The first energy transfer is red ray. It is a random transfer having to do only with your reproductive system. The orange and the yellow ray attempts to have sexual intercourse create, firstly, a blockage if only one entity vibrates in this area, thus causing the entity vibrating sexually in this area to have a never-ending appetite for this activity. What these vibratory levels are seeking is green ray activity. There is a possibility of orange or yellow ray energy transfer, this being polarizing towards a negative, one being seen as object rather than other self, the other seen itself as plunderer or master of the situation. In green ray there are two possibilities. Firstly, if both vibrate in green ray, there will be a mutually strengthening energy transfer, the negative or female as you call it drawing the energy from the roots of a beingness through the energy centers, thus being physically revitalized, the positive or male polarity as it is deemed in your illusion, finding in its energy transfer an inspiration which satisfies and feeds the spirit portion of the body-mind-spirit complex, thus both being polarized and releasing the excess of that which each has in abundance by nature of intelligent energy, that is, negative, intuitive, positive physical energies, as you may call them. This energy transfer being blocked only if one or both entities have fear of possession or of being possessed, of desiring possession or desiring being possessed. The other green ray possibility is that of one entity offering green ray energy, the other not offering energy of the universal love energy. This resulting in a blockage of energy for the one not green ray, thus increasing frustration or appetite, the green ray being polarizing slightly towards service to others. 
The Blu-ray energy transfer is somewhat rare among your people at this time, but is of a great aid due to energy transfer involved in becoming able to express the self without reservation or fear. The indigo ray transfer is extremely rare among your people. This is the sacramental portion of the body complex, whereby contact may be made through violet ray with intelligent infinity. No blockages may occur at these latter two levels due to the fact that if both entities are not ready for this energy, it is not visible and neither transfer nor blockage may take place. It is as though the distributor were removed from a powerful engine. Question. Could you please define sexual energy transfer and expand upon its meaning, please? Ra, energy transfer implies the release of potential energies across, shall we say, a potential space. The sexual energy transfers occur due to the polarization of two mind-body-spirit complexes, each of which have some potential difference one to the other. The nature of the transfer energy of the blockage of this energy is then a function of the interaction of these potentials. In the case where a transfer takes place, you may liken this to a circuit being closed. You may also see this activity as a experiential activities, as the creator experiencing itself. Question. Could this then be the primal mechanism for the creator to experience itself? Ra, this is not a proper term. Perhaps the adjectives would be one appropriate way of the creator knowing itself. For in each interaction, no matter what the distortion, the Creator is experiencing itself. The bisexual knowing of the Creator by itself has the potential for two advantages. Firstly, in the green ray activated being, there is the potential for a direct and simple analog of what you may call joy, the spiritual or metaphysical nature which exists in intelligent energy. This is a great aid to comprehension of a truer nature of beingness. The other potential advantage of bisexual reproductive acts is the possibility of a sacramental understanding, or connection, shall we say, with the gateway to intelligent infinity. For with appropriate preparation, work in what you may call magic may be done and experience of intelligent infinity may be had. The positively oriented individuals... Concentrating upon this method of reaching intelligent infinity, then, through the seeking or the act of will, are able to direct this in infinite intelligence to the work these entities desire to do, whether it be knowledge of service or ability to heal or whatever service to others is desired. These are two advantages of this particular method of the Creator experiencing itself. As we have said before, the corollary of the strength of this particular energy transfer is that it opens a door, shall we say, to the individual mind-body-spirit complex desire to serve in an infinite number of ways an other self, thus polarizing towards positive. Question. Can you expand somewhat on the concept that this action not only allows the Creator to know itself better, but also creates in our density an offspring or makes available the pathway for another entity to enter this density? Ra, as we have previously said, the sexual energy transfer include the red ray transfer, which is random, and which is a function of the second density attempt to grow, to survive, shall we say. This is a proper function of the sexual interaction. The offspring, as you call the incarnated entity, takes on the mind-body complex opportunity offered by this random act, or an event called the fertilization of egg by seed, which causes an entity to have the opportunity to then enter this density as an incarnate entity. This gives the two who are engaged in this bisexual reproductive energy transfer the potential for great service in this area of the nurturing of the small experienced entity as it gains in experience. It shall be of interest at this point to note that there is always the possibility of using these opportunities to polarize towards a negative and thus has been aided by the gradual building up of many thousands of your years of social complex distortion, which create a tendency towards confusion, shall we say, or baffling of the service to other aspect of this energy transfer and subsequent opportunities for service to other selves. Question. If a sexual energy transfer occurs in green ray, and I am assuming in this case that there is no red ray energy transfer, does this mean it is impossible for this particular transfer to include fertilization and the birthing of an entity? 
Raw. This is incorrect. There is always the red ray energy transfer due to the nature of the body complex. The random results of this energy transfer will be as if it will be as a function of the possibility of fertilization at a given time in a given pairing of entities, each entity being undistorted in any vital sense by the yellow or orange ray energies. Thus the gift, shall we say, being given freely, no payment being requested either of the body of the mind or the spirit. The green ray is one of the complete universality of love. This is giving without expectation of return. Question. I was wondering if there was some principle behind the fact that a sexual union does not necessarily lead to fertilization. I'm not interested in the chemical or physical principles of it. I'm interested in whether or not there is some metaphysical principle that leads to a couple having a child or not, or is it purely random? Ra, this is random within certain limits. If an entity has reached a seniority whereby it chooses the basic structure of the life experience, this entity may then choose to incarnate in a physical complex which is not capable of reproduction. Thus we find some entities which have chosen to be unfertile. Other entities, through free will, make use of various devices to ensure non-fertility. Except for these conditions, the condition is random. Question. Thank you. In previous material you mentioned magnetic attraction. Would you define and expand upon the term? We use the term to indicate that in your bisexual natures there is that which is of polarity. This polarity may be seen to be variable according to, shall we say, male-female polarization of each entity, be each entity biologically male or female. Thus you may see the magnetism which two entities with the appropriate balance, male-female versus female-male polarity, meeting and thus feeding the attraction which polarized forces will exert one upon the other. This is the strength of the bisexual mechanism. It does not take an act of will to decide to feel attraction for one who is oppositely polarized sexually. It will occur in an inevitable sense, giving the free flow of energy a proper, shall we say, avenue. This avenue may be blocked by some distortion toward a belief, condition, stating to the entity that this attraction is not desired. However, the basic mechanism functions as simply as would, shall we say, the magnet and the iron. Question. We have what seems to be an increasing number of entities incarnate here now who have what is called a homosexual orientation. Could you explain and expand upon that concept? Ra. Entities of this condition experience a great deal of distortion due to the fact that they have experienced many incarnations as a biological male and as a biological female. This would not suggest what you call homosexuality in an active phase were it not for the difficult vibratory condition of your planetary sphere. There is what you may call great aura infringement among your crowded urban areas in your more populous countries as you call portions of your planetary surface. Under these conditions the confusion will occur. Question. Why does density of population create these confusions? Ra. The bisexual reproductive urge has as its goal not only the simple reproductive function, but more especially the desire to serve others being awakened by this activity. In an overcrowded situation where each mind-body-spirit complex is under constant bombardment from other selves, it is understandable that those who are especially sensitive would not feel the desire to be of service to our other selves. This would also increase the probability of a lack of desire or a blockage of the red ray reproductive energy. In an uncrowded atmosphere, this same entity would, through the stimulus of feeling the solitude about it, then have much more desire to seek out someone to whom it may be of service than regularizing the sexual reproductive function. Question. Roughly how many previous incarnations would a male entity in this incarnation have to have in the past as a female to have a highly homosexual orientation in his incarnation. Ra, if an entity has had roughly 65% of its incarnations in the sexual biological body complex, the opposite polarity to its present body complex, this entity is vulnerable to infringement of your urban areas and may perhaps become of what you call a homosexual nature. It is to be noted at this juncture that although it is much more difficult, 
It is possible in this type of association for an entity to be of great service to another in fidelity and sincere green ray love of a non-sexual nature, thus adjusting or lessening the distortion of its sexual impairment. Question. Is there an imprint occurring on the DNA coding of an entity so that sexual biases are imprinted due to early sexual experiences? Ra, this is partially correct. Due to the nature of solitary sexual experience, it is in most cases unlikely that what you call masturbation has an imprinting effect upon later experiences. This is similarly true with some of the encounters which might be seen as homosexual among those of this age group. These are often instead innocent exercise and curiosity. However, it is quite accurate that the first experience in which the mind-body-spirit complex is intensely involved will indeed imprint upon the entity for that life experience a set of preferences. Question. Does the Orion group use this as a gateway to impress upon entities preference which could be of a negative polarization? Ra. Just as we of the Confederation attempt to beam our love and light whenever given the opportunity, including sexual opportunities, so the Orion group will use an opportunity if it is negatively oriented or if the individual is negatively oriented. Question. Is there any emotional bias that has nothing to do with male-female sexual polarity that can create sexual energy buildup in an entity? Ra. The sexual energy buildup is extremely unlikely to occur without sexual bias upon the part of the entity. Perhaps we did not understand your question, but it seems obvious that it would take an entity with the potential for sexual activity to experience a sexual energy buildup. Question. I was thinking more of the possibility of the Orion group influence certain members of the Third Reich, who I have read reports of having sexual gratification from the observation of the gassing and killing of entities in the gas chamber. Ra, we shall repeat these entities had the potential for sexual energy buildup. The choice of stimulus is certainly the choice of the entity. In the case of which you speak, these entities were strongly polarized orange ray, thus finding the energy blockage of power over others, the putting to death being the ultimate power over others, this then being expressed in a sexual manner through solitary. In this case, the desire would continue unabated and be virtually unquenchable. You will find, if you observe the entire spectrum of sexual practices among your people, that there are those who experience such gratification from domination over others, either from rape or from other means of domination. In each case, this is an example of energy blockage, which is sexual in its nature. Question. Would the Orion group be able, then, to impress on entities this orange ray effect, if this is the way that this came about? If we go back to the beginning of third density, there must be a primal cause of this. Ra. The cause of this is not Orion. It is the free choice of your people. This is somewhat difficult to explain. We shall attempt. The sexual energy transfer and blockages are more a manifestation or example of that which is more fundamental than the other way about. Therefore, as your people become open to the concepts of bellicosity and the greed of ownership, these various distortions then begin to filter down through the tree of mind into body complex expression, the sexual expression being basic to that complex. Thus, these sexual energy blockages, though Orion influenced and intensified, are basically the product of the beingness chosen freely by your people. This will be the final question, unless we may speak further upon this question to clarify or answer any short queries before we close. Question. I just need to know, then, if this works through the racial memory and infects the entire population in some way. Ra. The racial memory contains all that has been experienced. Thus, there is some, shall we say, contamination even of the sexual, this showing mostly in your own culture as the various predispositions to adversary relationships, or as you call them, marriage, rather than the free giving one to another in love in the light of the infant creator. Question. That was precisely the point that I was trying to make. Thank you very much. I do not wish to overtire the instrument, so I will ask if there is anything that we can do to make this instrument more comfortable or improve the contact. Ra, please be aware that this instrument is somewhat fatigued. The channel is very clear. However, we find the vital energy low. 
We do not wish to deplete this instrument. However, there is, shall we say, an energy exchange that we feel an honored duty to offer when this instrument opens itself. Therefore, counsel we this instrument to attempt to assess the vital energies carefully before offering itself as an open channel. All is well, you are conscientious. I am raw, I leave this instrument in you in the love and light of the one infinite creator. Go forth then, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one creator, Adonai. <laughs>